Some time ago, we were doing a very large project that required generating a lot of documentation. We soon realized that by doing it manually, we were taking too much time and we were losing control. So we decided to develop a methodology that would allow us to generate all the documentation automatically. Through a series of spreadsheets and dynamo scripts, we managed to create more than 600 views and plans in a few hours. Nowadays, there are tools that can save us time and effort in the generation of documentation, while it is done in a controlled way. In this video, Modelical will tell you how they work and how to implement them, so that this process is optimal and you can work more efficiently. Through the automatic documentation, you will be able to create your deliverable documents in an efficient and reliable way, without any extra effort. Traditionally, the documentation management was a very manual process where printing and reviewing sheets consumed a lot of time. Nowadays, in the digital era, where we can create plans through the BIM platforms, we have applied visual programming to projects and we have documentation management platforms where this process is very systematized. If we have these digital tools for managing and controlling documentation, but we still generate it manually in our BIM platforms, we are not taking advantage of all the potential from BIM. Let's imagine a BIM collaborative design project from the architecture discipline, for example, where conceptual design stage starts and leads to BIM modeling and coordination and at some point models are frozen to have time to coordinate all disciplines and that's where the documentation part begins. We create print views with, print, with view templates, we create sheets with their parameters, we place the views on the sheets with tag and dimension and finally we should make a control of all the documentation before it is being submitted. So in this whole process, stress and over-effort tends to increase as we approach the submission deadline. This means that errors can occur in the documentation process and if we do not have time to make a proper control, we will submit our project with errors. With automatic documentation, the aim is to facilitate the work of generating documentation and ensuring that this is done in a controlled manner. In this case, the creation of views and plans happens at a specific moment and not over time, so it takes less time and dedication in favor of more time for modeling and coordination and more time for tagging, dimensioning and making the control. So what is automatic documentation? Let's use a sample project to explain it. We're going to use as a sample the BIM model from the new museum tower in New York by Sanaa. This tower consists of a basement, ground level and nine levels. For each level we want to create area plans, architecture plans and structure plans with different view templates. Since the floor plan is very big, we have divided it into four zones with scope boxes corresponding to zone A, B, C and D. So we want to create a view for each scope box from each view template and for each level. There are 11 levels, we use 3 view templates and 4 scope boxes, that is a total of 132 floor plans. Not only we want to create floor plans but also elevations for east, north, south and west, a couple of sections and a 3D view. Not only I need to create views with the templates but also to create sheets with their parameters and place those views in the sheets. Since I have 132 floor plans with a specific view template, I want to create 44 sheets with the area plans with a specific legend. I also want to create 44 sheets with the architectural plans with a specific schedules and 44 sheets with the structural plans with no schedule. And I want to place all the elevations in one sheet and the sections in 3D view in another sheet. So, how can I do all this automatically with a simple click? Well, 
It is not a simple click since we all know that there is no such thing as the magic button in BIM. But at Modelical, we have developed a methodology through a series of steps to implement this generation process. It is based on six steps. First of all, we make an information intake from the model. Secondly, we prepare in spreadsheets the documentation we want to generate. And then we create the views automatically. We also create the sheets by automatic means. And we place the views in the sheets in the position we desire automatically as well. Finally, if some sheets layout change, uh, we can also update the position of those views. Let's see each step into deep. Before we start with the methodology, we need to have a Revit model where we have prepared the different components for the documentation. Those are work in progress views, sheets, schedules, legends, etc. The first step of this methodology is to read all this model information and we use Dynamo for that. So with one click through a Dynamo routine, we read all these components and they will be placed in a defined spreadsheet. The second step is to prepare the documentation we want to generate. For this, we have a spreadsheet template linked to the information we have read previously. It has specific tabs for views and sheets that we want to create. So we write in the cells all the views and sheets with all its parameters we are going to create. With this way, we can take advantage of all the potential of preparing documentation in spreadsheets, with all the functionalities like copying and dragging, etc. From here, we start to automate. The third step is to read the view spreadsheet and with one click through a Dynamo routine we create all the views automatically. For each level, three views, each one with a view template corresponding to architecture, area and structure and each one has four dependent views corresponding to each area uh, of the scope box. Then we also have all the elevations, sections and 3D views up to 139 views. It is worth saying that this methodology allows to create automatic floor plans, but as per the sections, elevations and 3D views, it only allows to duplicate work in progress views. It does not make sense to create automatic sections, for example, since it is me who decides where I want to cut my building. The fourth step is to read the sheets spreadsheet and with one click through a Dynamo routine we create all the sheets automatically up to 134 sheets with their corresponding revision, title block, viewport titles or any other parameters. The fifth step consists of placing the views, tables, legends, etc. on the sheets. And to do this, I have to previously create some sheet templates with the desired layout of views and schedules I want to create. For example, here in type 1, I have a view and schedule position in a particular way. And in the type 2, I have a view and a schedule arranged differently. So I want to place these views and these schedules according to the first layout and I want to place these other views and these other schedules according to another layout. So with one click through a Dynamo routine I place the views and the schedules on the sheets in the way the sheet template marks. Finally, in the event that after creating the sheets and placing the views there is a change in the layout, we have the possibility to update those changes. For example, now this sheet template will have a new layout distribution and I want to update the view position and the schedule position. So, with one click, a Dynamo routine will read those changes and update all the sheets that have the corresponding view template. These are the six steps from the automatic documentation methodology explained and now let's jump, let's jump into Revit to see how they are applied to this sample project. Well, I'm now in Revit in a 2021 version and I have my beam model over here consisting of a tower with a basement, ground level plus 9 levels. I have four scope boxes to divide the floor plan into four zones corresponding to zones A, B, C and D. 
and I have everything ready to generate my documentation. I have some work in progress reviews for floor plans, 3D views, elevations and sections. I have a legend, a couple of schedules, and I have prepared my sheet templates uh, to generate my sheets. I have here a sheet template to place the elevations and 3D views with a particular layout. I have another sheet template to place the floor plans, schedules or legends. And another sheet template to place sections and 3D views. I have named these sheet templates through the sheet name, sheet number with a template 1, template 2 and template 3. I have also prepared revisions. I have some view templates prepared for the architectural plans, area plans and structural plans. And I prepared some project parameters for organizing the sheets in the sheet groups in the project browser and also a parameter for views, the view group to organize my views in the project browser. So let's jump into the generation of automatic documentation and the first step of the methodology is the information intake. This means we need to read all the information from the model and place it in a spreadsheet. For that matter, we have a dedicated spreadsheet in Google Sheets with a series of columns corresponding to legends, schedules, model views, model sheets, where we are going to place all the information from the Revit model. It also has a dedicated tab for writing down the views we want to generate and for the sheets. We will see that later. So, I need to write down here all the information I have from the Revit model. And for doing so, we're going to use Dynamo. We have a dedicated Dynamo script called MasterRead that is going to read all the information from the Revit model and write it into a CSV file. Here it's asking us for a CSV file. So, we're going to export this empty CSV, download over here, I'm going to place it in my desktop, and in Dynamo, I'm going to call this CSV file we just downloaded. I hit run, and it will automatically read all the information into the CSV file. Now I only have to import the CSV file into Google Sheets. And it will automatically write down all the information I had in the Revit model corresponding to the legends, the schedules, the model views and the, view te the sheet templates I had prepared. The second step will be to prepare all the documentation we want to generate in this spreadsheet. For preparing the views, I have a tab over here, and this tab is linked to the previous tab with the model data. So I click one cell, it will show all the levels from the Revit model. And I can select basement, for example, and I can start selecting different parameters for this view. This is in case it is a duplicated view that we will use later. The scope box I'm going to be using it's the general and the view template is the architectural plan. As you can see, there is a scroll down menu with the different view templates from the model. The view template, it's um, fixing the view scale so I don't have to write that. Every scheme applies to area plans and here I select FP for floor plan. For the view name, I'm going to use the architectural plan, the same name as the view template. Important not to copy the cell, but the text on it, because as we said, all these cells are linked and have formulas, so better not replacing them. And for the basement, I'm going to tap here, basement. 
This is the view name and this view can have different dependent views. We are going to use these dependent views for the different zones from the floor plan. So for example, for dependent view number one, we're going to tap zone A. And I'm going to be adding the different dependent views corresponding to the different zones. As you can see, the cell is now highlighted in red. This means that I cannot have the same name for two different views. So here, what I should write down is zone B, zone C, and zone D. And automatically, the red highlight will disappear. And here, I have the dedicated scope box for each dependent view. This means, for example, that for dependent view, that it's called architectural plan basement zone A, I'm going to use, there is a scroll down menu with different scope boxes, zone A. Zone B for the second one, zone C for the third one, and so D, zone D for the fourth one. Now I can select a new level, ground level, level one, and I can scroll down for the different levels. As you see here, there is an error in this cell, meaning that this doesn't lie within the range. This means that we only have nine levels, so this level is not existing on the model, so I will delete it. These views will have also a general scope box, same view template, and same floor plan. And for the naming, what I can do is take advantage of all the functionalities from the spreadsheets. I can copy and paste, and it will highlight in red that there are different views with different names. So if I do Control H and I want to replace basement with ground level, it will automatically replace all the cells and they will be named accordingly. Over here, what I can do is copy and paste the scope boxes since each dependent view will have the same scope box assigned. And I can continue with copying all these view names from the main view and the dependent views. And now I will change ground level for level 1. Replace all and here I can scroll down for all the levels. So with this way I can easily prepare all the documentation I want to uh, generate regarding the views. As you can see over here we have three columns naming view parameters. These are specific parameters for views in case I have added my own project parameters for the Revit model and I want to use them. So I can add them in these columns. For example, view parameter number one, I can call it the view group. And it is important that the parameter has the same name it has in the Revit model. If we remember this view group parameter, it was a parameter for views. I have it over here. That is helping me to arrange the views in the project browser. In this case, this view corresponds to the view group work in progress. And here I have all these views accordingly arranged through the view group. Well, so in my spreadsheet, I can tap the name of the parameter and here I want I can add the value I want to have it. So I'm gonna arrange the um, the views through the view template and in this case I'm gonna copy and paste the name of the view template so I will have all the architectural plans with the view group architectural plan. Now I can scroll down over here 
and all these views will be arranged this way with the architectural plan view group parameter. This only applies to create automatic floor plans, but what if I want to generate sections, elevations, or 3D views? Well, as we mentioned before, I cannot generate them automatically, but I can duplicate the existing ones. In this case, we would go to level. Instead of selecting a level, we will select DUP as per duplicate. Instantly, it's asking us for a view to duplicate. And here I have a, a scroll down menu with the work in progress views I had prepared earlier. In this case, uh, they don't have any scope box or view template applied. I can specify the view scale and the type of view I will select. It will be EL as per elevation. As per the view group, I will just tap views in general. And the view name I will write down is elevation. In order to go straight to the point, I have prepared here a spreadsheet with a series of views and duplicate views uh, in order to make a proper example. So I'm just gonna copy them and place them into my spreadsheet. Over here, as we can see, I have prepared architectural plan views with four dependent views, area plan views with four dependent views, and structural plan views, as well as some duplicates for elevation sections and 3D views. This is just a sample project, but let's imagine that in my project I have more view parameters. What I can do is I can insert one column to the right and over here I will add a new view parameter, number four. In this example, I'm only going to use one view parameter so I can delete all this. And also, if I have more scope boxes in my project, I can add scope boxes and dependent views. Over here, if I insert one column to the right, I can insert a new dependent view, as well as I can insert a new scope box to the right. With this way, I can insert as many dependent and scope boxes I need for my project. Let's, for example, name this one architectural plan basement zone E. And in the scope box, I will name zone E. It's going to give me an error since there is no zone E in this project. And here it's saying that the input is must fall within the specific range of zones A, B, C, and D. So I'm just going to go back these operations and go to the initial spreadsheet. Okay, so now that we have prepared all the views we want to generate, it's time to prepare the sheets. And we have a tab for that over here where I can write down all the sheets I want to generate. First of all, it's asking me for a number. So I'm going to call it Modelical Documentation Architecture Basement 001. And directly, it's asking me for a title block for this sheet. So if I double click, it's showing me the title blocks uh, I have in the Revit model. I'm going to choose the A3 metric. I should also write down a name for this sheet. So I'm going to call it Architectural Plan Zone A Basement. And as for the four zones, 
I'm going to create four different sheets corresponding to zone B, C, and D. Now there is no red highlight since the view names of the sheets are not repeated. It's still asking me for a title block for these sheets. So I can scroll down over here. It's asking me for a revision. So if I double click, there is a scroll down menu with the revisions we have for this project. Let's pick for instance number one. And we can also scroll down. Next thing it's asking me is the sheet parameters. And if we remember well, in our project, we have dedicated sheet parameters for organizing the sheets in the project browser, corresponding to sheet group 0, 1, 2, and 3. So it is important that I write down in my spreadsheet the parameter with exactly the same letters. So over here, I'm going to write sheet dot group zero one and we have zero two and zero three. So over here, I'm going to place in print floor plan and in this case architecture. I can scroll down since these parameters will apply to all these sheets. And the viewport type I want to apply for these views in the sheet, if I can I can scroll down and select the no title. Next is the title block and its parameters. Here, for example, I have created a parameter called sequence that it can show me that, for example, if I tap T001, and I can scroll down, it will show the sequence um, that the sheets are created. There is another parameter I don't need, so I can delete it. And over here, it's asking me for the views I want to place in this sheet. So for the architectural plan zone A basement, I'm going to place the architectural plan basement zone A. I can keep on adding views on sheets. I can add a legend or I can add schedules. For example, I can add a door schedule. In this case, I don't want to apply any legend. I have applied one schedule and if I want to add another schedule, I can insert to the right schedules on sheet and I can add a furniture schedule. The same way I can add schedules, I could add legends, insert to the right, or I can insert to the right another view on sheet column. And finally, it's asking us for placement. Placement corresponds to the sheet template we have previously created. If we remember well, in this project, we had created three different sheet templates corresponding to different layouts. The sheet template T02, as the sheet number says, it had a layout dedicated for placing elevations and 3D views. Sheet template number one had a specific layout for floor plans and schedules and legends. And sheet template number three was dedicated for sections. Well, in this case, since we're going to place a floor plan, I'm going to tap T01. And now I can scroll down for the different sheets. It's highlighting me in red that I am calling the same, I am placing the same view in different sheets. And that's because here I need to change the zones. So, zone 
B, C, and D. So there will be no error anymore. I can place the same schedule in all the four sheets and I can place the same other schedule as well as this sheet template applies to all these sheets. Now that I have prepared the sheets for the architectural basement, I can copy and replace basement for ground floor. Now it's automatically not showing me the error and the same for the name of the sheets and I can replace basement per ground floor. I would apply the same title blocks and I would apply the corresponding views for those sheets. As we did earlier, I have already prepared a spreadsheet with all the sheets I want to generate. So I'm just going to copy them all and paste into my spreadsheet. Over here, what I have prepared is a series of sheets for the architectural plans for each level and for each scope box, as well as sheets for area plans, structure plans, and a couple of sheets for architectural elevations and architectural sections, each one with the corresponding views on every sheet. Now that we have prepared all this documentation to generate, the last step would be to export the views spreadsheet into a CSV file. I'm going to place it in desktop again, as well as the sheets tab into a CSV file, so we can read them with Dynamo. And with this, we finish with the second step, which is preparing the documentation. And now we can jump into Revit to start the automatic creation of documentation. We are back in Revit and we're going to start with the third step, which is the creation of the automatic views. We're also going to use Dynamo for that and we have a dedicated script which is the master views. This Dynamo script, it's asking us for some things. First of all, it's asking us for the CSV file that we have exported previously from the Google Sheets. And if I go over here, I'm going to select the views CSV file. It's also asking me for a view, for a range of views I want to create. Here I have to place the start and finish row from my Google Sheet Views tab. It will start in the row number 2 and I want to create up to number 42. If I put a different number it will only create up to that number of row. So. In Dynamo, I want to create views from row 2 to 42. And the only thing I also need to edit is in case I have some custom parameters for views, which is in this block over here. Here it's asking me for view parameter 01, which is my personalized parameter. We remember well we had used the view group parameter in order to organize views in the project browser. So all I have to do in Dynamo is to rename this parameter over here with exactly the same words as we have it in Revit. Once this is done, I am ready to hit run 
and automatize the tasks for the views creation. So I'm going to hit run and now the program is going to be thinking. So during this time it's going to create uh, floor plans for each level with the corresponding view template and divide it into four dependent views corresponding to each scope box for every level as well as the elevations and sections and 3D views I want to duplicate. If we see over here I have my project browser with the views and once this is finished it will automatically create all these views that are arranged as we can see here through the view group parameter that I have arranged them in architectural plan, area plan, structural plan and general views. So for the architectural plan it has automatically created a view for each level and each view it has four dependent views corresponding to the four scope boxes. The same for the area plans with a different template and divided into different scope boxes and the same for the structural plans that they have a different view template and they are all divided into four zones corresponding to the scope boxes it has always it has also duplicated some 3d views 3d elevations for the 3d view sorry for the elevations and sections So, with this way, we have created up to 139 views with applied view templates and scope boxes within a few seconds. And now, we jump into the fourth step, which is the creation of sheets. We are also going to use Dynamo for that, and we have a dedicated script called Master Sheets that it's asking us for some things. First of all, it's asking us for a CSV file corresponding to the CSV sheets we have exported from Google Sheets. Here I can upload it. And it's asking us for a range corresponding to the range of rows we want to create, going from 2 to 135. up 135 and over here we can add as many custom parameters we want for sheet and for title block if we remember well in our Google Sheets we had added sheet parameters sheet group 1 2 and 3 for better organizing my sheets in the project browser as well as a title block parameter called sequence well so over here in Dynamo I have already prepared these sheet parameters naming the same way they are named in Revit corresponding to sheet group 1, 2 and 3 as well as the sequence parameter for the title block. Okay, so once this is ready all I have to do is hit run and now the program will start thinking and will start creating sheets for each floor plan corresponding to architectural area and structural plans and for uh, uh, elevations and sections. The program is done and as we can see here they have been organized through the view group parameters they have all been placed in print and separated into elevations, floor plans and sections. Over here we can see we have created a sheet, it is empty because we haven't placed the views already and we have created all the sheets for the architectural plans with a different title block. All the sheets, they have all the corresponding information in the title block corresponding for example for to architectural plan zone B and the names and everything. We have also created sheets for area plans and for structure plans as well as a sheet for sections with a different title block as well. 
OK. So now that we have created all the sheets, it is time to jump into the fifth step, which will be placing the views into its corresponding sheets. And for that, remember that previously we had created some sheet templates that were dictating the position of the views in the sheet. In this case, for the elevations and the 3D view, we had a sheet template with a particular layout. For the floor plans, schedules and legends, we had this sheet template and a different sheet template for the sections and the 3D view. And also, we had specified in our Google Sheets for each sheet which was the sheet template applied, being type 1 for all the sheets corresponding to floor plans and sheet templates number 2 for elevations and number 3 for sections. So, for doing that, we're gonna place ourselves over here. We have a dedicated Dynamo called Master Placement. This Dynamo, it's asking us for a CSV file corresponding to the sheets CSV we have used previously and a range that we will use the same range from rows 2 to 135. Once this is set, we can hit run and the program will start thinking and automatically placing the views into its corresponding sheet according to the sheet template they have been assigned. So we will have um, architectural elevations placed in the architectural elevation sheet with the um, particular layout from sheet template number one. And here we go. Within a few seconds, it has placed all the views into the sheets with the layout we have um, applied. So in this case, sheet elevations has all these elevations with the uh, viewport title applied. In this case, I don't want to apply a viewport title, so I'm just going to remove it. For the architecture sheets, they have been all filled with views corresponding for the architectural plan with architectural uh, views and uh, with these particular schedules. For the area sheets, we have placed an area plan with a legend and for the structure sheets, we have placed a structure view with no legend. And for the architectural sheet, the architectural sections sheet, we have placed a couple of sections and a 3D view, which in this case, I'm gonna remove the title block, the viewport title. So with this way, we have placed all the views into its corresponding sheets within a few seconds. Finally, the last step will be to update the position of the views in the sheets. Imagine that at some point during the project, we decide to change the position of these views in this sheet. And for example, I want to have this view over here and this view over here. But in my sheets, I have it the other way around. And imagine it's not only one sheet, but it's many sheets. So doing manually, it makes no sense. That is why we had uh, prepared a project parameter called sheet type that it's storing the type of sheet template that every sheet has. So for the architectural elevations, it has the sheet template number two. And for the floor plan uh, sheets, it has the sheet template number one. Well, so now that template number two 
has changed, we want to update this sheet according to the changes from sheet template number two. And we also have a dedicated Dynamo for that. I'm going to open the master update position. This one, it's only going to read sheet type for every sheet and update the position. So, for instance, we have already changed the sheet template. We hit run and automatically it will update the position of these views according to the new layout. The program will start thinking and after some time it has already updated the position of the views in this sheet. So if we had many sheets that had this template applied, they all have uh, changed the position of the reviews. Note that we have created up to 139 views with all its applied view templates and scope boxes, 134 sheets with all its corresponding parameters, and we have placed all the views into the sheets in a matter of minutes. This automatic documentation methodology consisting of Dynamo automations can save you a lot of time and effort in the documentation process. Not only that, but thanks to the spreadsheets, it also allows you to control that there are no errors. And this methodology can easily be adapted to any documentation workflow no matter the size or the project or amount of information. That is why, from Modelica, we encourage you to use this kind of processes for your workflows in order to work more efficiently, saving time and effort.